Hello, it's Sarah, and um, I'm trying to adjust my light because this is making me look rather odd, so I think I'll just move it over there. Um, hi everyone, it's Sarah. Um, I hope you're having a great week. Um, the light's a bit funny in this office actually, so I'm just going to um, move the camera around a little bit. I have got a bit, of a, a bit of a snuffly cold, so I've had to employ the power of positive thinking a bit myself. So um, I've just spent the day actually doing workshops with clients and um, that's been really, really good, learning all about communications, how to communicate with your team, stuff like that. So if you ever want to learn anything about team communications, let me know because I've just spent a really great day clearing up all sorts of misunderstandings, miscommunications that sometimes we can have at work and sometimes that we experience. So thank you for joining this evening. And um, I have done a couple of videos on this before, but I thought to go into the power of positive thinking and how does it all work. So I've got quite a bit to share with you this evening, but it's a subject that I'm really passionate about because I've found in my own life, uh, I'm just going to say hello to the people that have joined. Let's have a look. Let's see if I can see my viewers. Da, da, da. There we go. Anyway, so good evening um, or good day, wherever you are. It's something I'm really passionate about because I have found that basically through my own life experience when I started delving into the world of self-development many, many decades ago, um, my life experiences and my ability not just to have positive experiences and enjoy those day-by-day -day moments, but my ability to build resilience and bounce back has significantly increased. Um, as I've changed my mindset to a predominant way of thinking, and there's quite a lot of evidence that, that backs this up. So um, what I'm going to talk about this evening or share with you is what positive thinking actually means, uh, the results it can create for ourselves and in our lives, um, what can challenge us with positive thinking and how we can get out of that, and techniques and tools for you. Now, what I'm not saying is if you do have a problem with depression or you have a mental condition, this by all means seek uh, help from a healthcare professional and an expert. And I think at any time you're struggling, the ability to be able to express yourself, even if you are an introvert, will really help you solve whatever problem you've got going on in your life. So basically, positive thinking means that how we think can have a direct result on our behaviours. And a lot of this is aligned to the concept of having a fixed mindset or a flexible open mindset. A fixed mindset will be very narrow and insecure. And if you view every single challenge as negative and it's like, oh, it's all about me, I can't do anything about it, and you feel threatened and insecure about other people's success or jealous, it's likely you've got that fixed mindset. Now, if you've got a more flexible open mindset, you will see failure as an opportunity to learn. You will be able to enhance your skills with resilience, persistence and hard work. So it gives us the opportunity to really flex our thinking and see setbacks as opportunities. It's a mental attitude. Positive thinking is an attitude of gratitude, an attitude you adopt to really expect or set the ground or the stage for good and favourable results. Now, sometimes things happen that are out of our control. And again, positive thinking or thinking in a more abundant way will allow you to ride some of those challenges and increase your mental strength, like going to the gym. But um, this idea of the positive mindset means that you can expect good and favor favourable results. So it's the process of really deliberately creating, without force, without forcing yourself, but it does take a bit of practice, like when we ride the bike for the first time when we're wobbly, it takes time to get into these practices, but about deliberately creating thoughts and transforming our thoughts and our energy into reality. And with a positive mindset, we are awaiting happiness. Even if things at the moment are quite challenging, we can expect happiness, health, and uh, sort of more or less a, a happy ending in most situations. It's not to say challenges won't arise because they will, but we anticipate that. We set the groundwork for, for dealing with the challenges, but also expecting favorable results. It's a mental and emotional attitude of expecting those results. And although we have moments, don't get me wrong, I've had some real challenges this week. Um, but we all have them. But it's about not getting discouraged and giving up, but trying to move forward as much as we can at our own pace. 
not accepting defeat, but trying again and again. It's an attitude of focusing on the positive in a situation, like even if you are really down, what are you grateful for? What can you be grateful for in this moment? And not dwelling on the negative. Yes, I'm not saying, or should I say no, I'm not saying ignore the negative. I'm not saying run away from your problems. What I'm saying is face them, step into them, learn from them, but don't dwell on the negative. Somebody once said, you know, you might put your tent in a muddy field, but it doesn't mean you stay there if the rain keeps coming. You move your tent to a better position. So that's, I really like that metaphor. And we don't stick in the wrong, we don't continue to drive our car in the wrong gear. If you accidentally put it into second and you meant to put it in third, we don't wait till the engine starts burning. We might go, oh, hang on, this doesn't feel right. The car's not moving and we shift gears. So this is what it's about. It's also about Excuse me, my voice is a bit croaky, hence my challenges this week, because I've been speaking. Um, it's an attitude of focusing on the good and the positive, what we can learn. Um, focusing on the good in people as well, not the bad. What, what's good about somebody? That's not to say you don't have boundaries and address things with people, but having optimism and a positive attitude goes a long way. The, ha, sorry, having the positive mindset would encourage and motivate people. So if you're in a leadership position, if you've got a positive mindset, you're more likely to be a more effective leader. And, and Collins Dictionary actually defines um, positive, positive thinking as having an optimistic mindset. And the Oxford Dictionary actually says it's the practice or result of concentrating one's mind affirmatively on the good and constructive aspects of a matter so as to eliminate negative or destructive attitudes and emotions. I really like that, that contrast between um, constructive aspects of our lives and thought patterns and destructive. It's like two sides of the coin, the angel and the devil, the bad wolf and the good wolf. And I mean, that's not to say that these negative experiences aren't the best teachers for us sometimes. We make that progress doing our biggest challenges sometimes, but actually weighing up how constructive and how deconstructive you are. I like those words. I think I'll use them a bit more often. Anyway, so what's the science behind this? Can we really change our brains? Well, if you think about um, our brains, they are a bit like um, Play-Doh or plasticine. They're spongy and soft. And I actually posted a video on uh, Facebook about there was a thought and um, by using this particular machine, you could see other thoughts joining this thought. So if you've got a bad thought, it's like a magnet and it attracts other bad thoughts and they all stick together and bind. So you can reverse that. Now, in extreme circumstances, when people suffer terrible trauma or physical industry, in, industries, injuries, their brains will um, very often figure out a new pathway, a new brain network, a neural network, like a computer seeking a file, or like Google seeking something on the internet that you've searched for. On a subconscious level, or even on, they, the brain will work to really try and help you navigate your way through that injury and find a, way, find a way around how can my body function, how can my brain function with this injury. So that's where a lot of this feeling, um, sorry, theory and science behind neuroplasticity come, comes from. It's like going to the gym for our brains. Our brain is working things out, how to reshape and deal with a situation. It is rewiring. There are about 100 billion neurons in your brain. There are about 5,000 connections in each of those neurons, and they are called synapses. And that is like having 500 trillion micropressors wired together in this thing that we carry around in our heads. How phenomenal is that? And it will rewire to adapt. It never stands still. So guess what? If you're, if you're feeding, you know, you look at people that have had terrible injury, injuries and their brain has sort of figured out how to get them going, how to keep their nervous system going, how to keep their organs going, how to give them limited movement. But if you look at how people recover from trauma, and that is their brain. They're really actively using their brain and physical exercise. They're aligning their mind and body to overcome that challenge. I'm sure we've all seen things like that. Maybe we know people that have been through those terrible situations and most challenging of life situations. But it's a vast network. And the problem is that our brain can't always distinguish ne between negative and positive. So sometimes... Um, we have this thing called a negativity bias. Um, 
And that's something you may have heard talked about before. And that, what that means is that our brain is really good at learning from bad experiences, but less um, good at learning from good experiences. That's why there's a lot of discussion today about trying to learn from positive experiences, being mindful, really increasing our brain's ability to notice the positive, to be grateful every day. Um, our brain is sometimes looking for negative information and sometimes our brain will store those negative reactions and those and and, and that's why sometimes we learn faster from pain than pleasure um, it's a bit like our brain is velcro for those bad experiences but teflon from the good so the velcro attracts it and Teflon for the good. So we do have that negativity bias in our brains already. And I think that from what I understand, what that comes from is um, what kept us alive in the Stone Age. I'm really sorry about my husky voice, by the way. This neg I've had a bit of a cold. The negativity bias has kept our ancestors alive. But, you know, in terms of running away from dangerous situations, finding food, um, but now, as we're evolving, it, we maybe don't need that level of um, negativity bias. I mean, it serves a good purpose so that you are aware of what might be good for you and what's bad for you, but sometimes it can be a bottleneck to, to, to block good experiences. Um, there's a, now, moving on to some of the science that I've read about, and this is the stuff I find really interesting, um, and I'm just going to read some of my notes here. There was a guy, because there's quite a lot of detail, Dr. Rick Hansen developed something called the Taking in the Good Course. It was six three-hour classes that combined exercises, presentations, discussions, home practice readings, and it was all around this acronym called HEAL. And HEAL was all about have a positive experience, enrich it, absorb it, and link the positive experience to negative material to soothe or replace it. So that means um, there's a technique called positive aspects, noticing positive aspects. So this is all about, in a negative situation, what can you take from the positive? So it's HEAL, positive experience, enrich, absorb, and link the positive experience to some negative thing that you're trying to overcome. And it, then he took it further to say, how could we adopt these positive experiences in everyday life using just a few seconds to take in a moment of relaxation, to recognize an accomplishment, or to like find a warmth in a stranger's smile. I'm sorry, I don't mean that to sound weird, but you know, sometimes when you just connect with people in the shop or have a chat with somebody, those kind of small experiences that really um, enrich our life experiences. Now, during the course, the participants of taking in this good or this heal developed greater overall well-being. They internalized the resources that he used to address personal stress, anxiety, irritation, frustration, loss, a blue mood, loneliness, hurt, or inadequacy. And the course really helped them to develop inner strength, the qualities that um, were needed in this taking the good course, which was around kindness towards oneself and others, and it helped to sensitize the brain to positive experiences. So really trying to work on that negativity bias. Now, our, when people were taking this course, uh, it was Dr. Rick Hansen, six three-hour courses, classes that talked about the taking in the good to sort of help with the negativity bias. So there was a battery of psychological tests that were administered before, during and after the course, the first two times it was offered. And after the, after the course, people reported less anxiety and depression, more savouring and enjoyment of life, more gratitude, greater mindfulness and self-control, more love and self-compassion, higher self-esteem, more positive emotions and fewer negative ones, greater overall happiness and satisfaction with life. Now, if I could go onto Sainsbury's online and order that for my shopping, I think I'd have that every day. And I don't care how much it would cost, but isn't that amazing that in the study, this was recognized. Then there was a formal study conducted and they randomly assigned participants of the course in 2013 uh, to a wait list um, to take another course in 2013 
and they did sort of a control group where you had one group taking the course, one that didn't. Those who completed the spring course, the ones that actually took the course, reported greater contentment, gratitude, self-esteem, savouring, satisfaction to those that hadn't yet taken the course. And those were all things that were measured in this controlled study. So it's, it's amazing how just that short span of time, that course of six three-hour courses and classes can really help shift our, our positive thinking, um, shift our mindset to a more flexible um, and open way of working and reduce some of those negative aspects. Now, you know, I don't know what happens if you stop thinking that way. I would imagine it's a bit like going to the gym, that your body might, you might put on weight, you might not become as toned as you were. It's about consistent effort. I think that's something that's really important. Even if you just meditate for five, ten minutes a day, that's great. Even if you just smile, because smile increases dopamine, or have a positive interaction, aim for one positive interaction every day. What's the best that you can do? If you're feeling down, can you notice something in nature, like, you know, or be grateful for um, your friends, your family, your home, something. There's always something to be grateful for. So you might not be able to do everything every day, um, but try and keep the momentum going because it's a baseline that you can build from. Now, there was another positive thinking study. There's loads of this stuff. I'm an absolute nerd for some of this. But there was a positive thinking study in March 2016 in the Journal of Behaviour Research and Therapy from King's College. And it tested 102 subjects with anxiety disorder. They asked one, uh, one group from the participants to visualise a positive outcome to each of the three worries they'd had in the past week. They asked another group to think of verbal positive outcomes and the last group to visualise any positive image whenever they started to worry. The two groups out of the three that, that visualised, as in pictures in their mind, not just verbalising, visualised and could see a positive image whether it related to a specific worry or general greater happiness, um, they reported decreased anxiety, greater restfulness and an increased happiness. And again, this was all measured. So it really demonstrated the ability that we have to shape our minds by thinking in images. Not all of us are visual people, but most human beings are fairly visual in terms of how we see the world. We had to be because we were like fending for our lives as cavemen, our ancestors were. So our, our visual senses, our audio, they're very honed. So employing all the senses is good. I mean, have you ever smelt an aftershave of an ex-boyfriend that you haven't been with for years or something? And how over the longer term, the sense of smell can be very powerful. But actually, in the most case, we're, as human beings, we're very visual and that idea that within these groups, the people that are employed those visual, conjuring up movie, conjuring up an image in your mind, reported greater happiness. Now, another study for you. I told you this was about the science, and I'm not even going into half the detail. But anyway, just as a top line, December 2005, the issue of Psychological Bulletin examined studies of over 275,000 people and found that the happiest people owe their success in part to their optimism and positive outlook. The head researcher from UC Riverside concluded, when people feel happy, they tend to feel confident, optimistic and energetic, and others find them likeable and sociable. Happy people are therefore able to benefit from these perceptions. So positive mind, positive results, positive energy. Have you ever been to a party and there's somebody sitting there glum? not feeling happy, withdrawn. There's somebody else who's really outgoing, really open and really happy. Now, I know some of us are more introvert than extrovert, and I'm not asking you to pretend to be somebody you're not, but it's about your outlook. You know, if you're an introvert, you can go thing about things in your own way at your own pace. You don't have to be with a big group of people. Maybe you're just enjoying the music, enjoying the company of one person. But actually, your mindset will say, that was a great party or, well, nobody talked to me, da, da 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 And very much that's about your outlook and the fact that you haven't gone into something with an open mindset and a flexible mindset. Um, also, at the University of Kentucky, it's a bit more science, um, analysed over 300 separate studies done over 30 years 
in the psychological community on the effects of stress on humans and concluded that when people face a stressful situation, they get a burst of adrenaline, you know that fight or flight, and it boosts their immune system to help them better deal with the immediate threat. So remember, primeval man, saber-toothed tiger, burst of adrenaline, deal with a stressful situation, immediate hit, your body's telling you it's something I need to deal with now. But over time, if you continue to stress with stress hormones like cortisol, if adrenaline is continuing to running, run, that adrenaline is not designed to be running and running and running. And let's face it, a lot of us are running around, our stress hormones, cortisol, our adrenaline is probably running at a high level, our immune systems break down, it can cause depression, illness and anxiety. So if you can't change your situation, can you find ways of being calmer, calming things down? Thinking about something in a different way, slowing your thoughts, easing yourself in. Also, I've mentioned this before, again, University of Kentucky, um, they examined some diaries that were kept by nuns, yes I said it, nuns, in the 1930, living together in the same convent in their early years. Now bear with me, these nuns were between the ages of 18 to 32 and they were rated on a scale of positivity. 60 years later, the researchers contacted the surviving nuns who were now aged 75 to 90, so that's a good, I'm not very good at maths despite the fact I'm talking about science. Anyway, it's a long time later on. Of those that were still alive, half, had half of those nuns had lived beyond the average life expectancy. Of the longest living survivors, all of them, all of them, all of those nuns had um, scored high on the positive thoughts they were measured against or about their feelings of life. And this was measured by them writing in, in their journals back from 1930 to, to where they were now. And I've talked about that before in my other video on positivity. It didn't matter the circumstances or what was happening, but actually the, the ones that had the longest life expectancy, linking back to what I've just said about stress, cortisol, adren cortisol adrenaline, and which can shorten our life expectancy, that the ones that survived longer um, had this higher rate of positivity scoring in their journals and their diaries. Amazing, eh? So, I've talked about results it can create in life. All I can share is with my clients. I spend a lot of time um, setting goals and plans, but it is nothing without the mindset. It is nothing without, on some level, having that belief you can do it. And if you don't believe you can do it, if you don't believe you can change your career or your outcome, you have to find a solution to rewire that belief. Otherwise, you can have all the goals in the world, but it really is that inner work. It's like tuning the engine. Positive thinking doesn't mean we can control everything in life, but it does mean we can learn and develop and build our resilience. And once you do it once and really go into it and what you learn, you can stop moaning and complaining. Yes, sometimes we do need to go into that fear. Sometimes we do need to admit, this isn't my best month. This isn't my best time at the moment. I'm having a really tough time. Go and get help about that. Think about, I'm a great believer in releasing where you are, accepting how you're feeling, but then moving on from it. Back to that analogy of the car in the wrong gear or the tent pitched in the wrong ground. <coughs> Let's not stay there for too long. I can vouch for the fact my life has got eminently better since I think I'm thinking in this way. Not to say I don't have my times or I have my challenges, and my clients report better results. As soon as they start thinking, do you know what? What's holding me back? It's me and my mindset. And do you know what? I think I can do this. Their results just skyrocket. It's unbelievable. And, and I think as some of the studies I've indicated show, the science is there to back it up as well. Now, I said I'd talk about the challenges. What happens when we feel really down? As I mentioned, let's not deny those feelings. And if it's a consistently, I can't get out of bed in the morning, you must seek help. Understand what you can learn. Understand if there is a chink of light you can see. Is there a lesson you can learn? I'm not telling yourself off, but is there something you will do differently next time? And the other thing I've learned is just doing one thing, taking one step, getting some fresh air. It may not shift you 100%, but it will gradually edge you up percentage by percentage by percentage. It's like taking a step up a ladder. Unless you've got really, really long legs, you're not gonna go from that stop top bottom rung to the top, but you are gonna go bit by bit. 
So start with one thing one day, then try something else and build about build on it. It's like a crescendo and a momentum. And a lot of that is about what we're telling ourselves here. So sometimes I know it can be challenging. Sometimes when I've had really challenging times, I've just thought about what can I appreciate right now? If I've been driving in the car, I look and think, hmm, the sky's really blue. I give thanks for the sky. The birds, you know, and I find other things that I can add to it. It is that crescendo effect. Or even just doing something nice for somebody else, getting out of your own head, will really help with that challenge that we sometimes all have about thinking positively. This isn't about ignoring what's going on. This is about stepping into it, learning, having that flexible mindset and understanding that we can shape our brains. The science is there. The techniques are there. There's stuff all over the internet about it. I see it in my clients and I've seen it in my own life. So it is possible to learn and move on. And actually, sometimes during these difficult times, we learn the most. So a few tools for you. I've talked about what can you be grateful for now talked about helping other people. I've talked about smiling. Smiling increases dopamine, the feel-good hormone. Exercise, critical. Even if it's a walk, taking a step in the fresh air. Are you sleeping enough? Are you exercising enough? Are you eating good foods? Um, not sort of eating junk foods, but food that is gonna nourish your body because your mind needs to have a nourished body and um, Exercise increases those feel-good hormones. Have you got goals in your life? <clears throat> I'm really sorry about my voice. Have you got goals in your life? Have you got a purpose that you're aiming towards? Um, I've done a few videos on purpose. It doesn't have to be a sweeping, massive statement. Your purpose could be to, to be happy. If you don't feel like you can look a long way ahead with your goals because of where you are now, think about what's over the next few months or the next month or the next week. What can you do differently? to get, increase that positive mindset. Are you hanging around positive people and role models or are you around people that really drain you? So have a think about that. Try and sort of imagine a golden light around you if people say things that get on your nerves. Notice where you get triggered and think, is that about them or is that something I need to work on in my mindset? Positive affirmations, positive statements, replacing that, pos that negative chatter, that... Uh, making sure we have a constructive chatter, not destructive. Meditation and visualization. I talked about visualization before, talked about an experiment where using visual techniques reduced, it, reduced stress, anxiety. It's helped people with post-traumatic stress disorder in many, many cases. So visualization, visualization. Um, meditation, meditation helps us to slow down our thoughts. I find sometimes myself I can get caught up with being busy and sometimes just slowing down five to ten minutes every day, meditating really helps to slow down our thoughts and not become hostage to our own negative thoughts and that spiral. So I really wanted to share with you today the science of positive thinking. I've explained what positive thinking is, what it means, the results it can create in our lives, the challenges we sometimes face with positive thinking and some techniques and tools you can use. Um, I've also covered some science, so you can see it's well steeped in science. And I'm no scientist, I just find it fascinating. And um, yeah, if you've got any questions or comments or you'd like any more information on the, on the tools and techniques, then please let me know. Again, apologize for the croaky voice. Um, but yeah, it's been great sharing this content with you. I'll be doing that, another Facebook Live next week, so watch this space for the content of what that's going to be about. If you've got any comments, please leave some comments. And um, if there's any subjects you'd like me to tackle, please let me know. And don't forget, I've got a private Facebook group all about career reinvention, rebooting your career. If you want more details than that, get in touch. Okay then, enjoy the rest of your evening or day. Take care.